Welcome to the Anxious Morning. Every weekday morning, we'll take a few minutes to go over important lessons that you can use in your anxiety recovery journey. The Anxious Morning brings you support, education, inspiration, encouragement, and empowerment. Read or listen quietly on your own time, free of the endless, noisy scroll of social media. Use the information to help you along the path to recovery from panic disorder, agoraphobia, and other anxiety problems. For more, visit us at theanxiousmorning.com. Yesterday, we talked about why the people who can most benefit from exposure therapy tend to hate exposure therapy. When people recoil at the mention of exposure-based recovery methods, they are often missing the part where we start with very tiny steps. If you've been stuck on your sofa for the past six months, you're not going to be driven into the woods 100 miles from home and left. That's not exposure. Effective exposure incorporates two main principles that can really bring down the terrifying factor in a big way. So if you're imagining that doing exposure work would be like having a continuous panic attack for six months, you're mistaken, and here's why. Exposure is based on incremental progress. There's a reason why it's called graduated or graded exposure. When treating something like agoraphobia, exposure work can often start with simple visualization exercises or practicing the act of putting on one's coat or tying one's shoes. There is no need to start with moonshot exposures. In fact, the vast majority of therapists would simply not allow that. Starting with very small steps is the most effective way to get the recovery ball rolling and to build a strong foundation that more challenging tasks can rest on. If you've ever seen the hilarious movie, What About Bob?, you know the value of baby steps. Baby steps aren't nearly as scary or difficult as what you are imagining. Exposure can be anything at all. A good counselor or therapist will understand that you are not really afraid of the supermarket, but rather that you fear the discomfort of anxiety or panic in the supermarket. This being the case, an exposure plan won't necessarily involve being forced to sit in the frozen food aisle for 40 minutes, but might instead find easier to execute ways to trigger discomfort, even in your own home. Sometimes simply changing a morning routine or working on modifying the way you talk about your anxiety can be difficult and triggering. These smaller, more subtle tasks and modifications are perfectly acceptable, effective, and quite common in the early stages of an exposure-based therapy plan. If a trip alone to a crowded shopping mall makes you want to run screaming from any discussion of exposure therapy methods, consider that sometimes just changing your toothpaste or sleeping with your phone in a different room can be effective and less daunting ways to start you down the path of recovery. Anything could be an exposure. It doesn't all have to be challenging and terrifying at an epic level. Of course, a successful exposure-based therapy will involve an incremental and systematic increase in the level of difficulty of each exposure over time. This is part of the deal, and without it, there is no lasting progress. Starting small and being resourceful and creative in the beginning means that you'll build a stronger base to stand on, making the larger tasks and challenges you've faced down the road less difficult and frightening than you are imagining them to be right now. Exposure therapy is hard. It involves being afraid and uncomfortable intentionally and by design. In reality, though, exposure is not torture. When properly designed and under the guidance of a good therapist or counselor, exposure can be far more manageable than you think and will therefore be far more fruitful and rewarding in the long run. Take some time to look past your initial distaste and disapproval of this type of recovery plan. You may find yourself feeling empowered to give it a fair try once you do. Now, tomorrow, we'll take a look at the concept of courage and how it's so often misunderstood. Hey, if you're enjoying the podcast and you'd like to get a copy of it delivered every morning into your email inbox, including a full text transcription, head on over to theanxiousmorning.email and sign up for the newsletter. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or someplace where you can leave us a rating or a review, take a moment and rate the podcast and maybe write a small review. It really helps us out. Or just tell a friend about us. Thanks a lot.